Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video we're going to discuss feedback loops. And you may even be curious as to why this is a topic worth exploring. Well, just to put a little bit of a spoiler alert out there, feedback loops essentially represent how everything works in the body. In other words, to understand feedback loops puts you one step closer towards having a better understanding of how the body works. Now, the key word that I need to put before you is homeostasis, and the dictionary definition is the tendency of a system, namely our body systems, to maintain internal stability in response to any situation or stimulus that would tend to disturb its normal function or condition. Now, one of the things that will help us understand this concept even more is the fact that we only have two options when it comes to feedback loops. We either have a negative feedback loop or we have a positive feedback loop. But I'd like to caution you on something. It's normal and easy for us to think that the term negative here must mean that something is happening to or in the body that is always harmful. And that positive here automatically means that something is happening to or in the body that benefits it. This is not the case. So before we unpack the true difference between the two, let's discuss the components of a feedback loop regardless of whether it's negative or positive. Our four components are as follows. First, we have a control center. Second, we have an effector. Thirdly, we have a variable. And fourth and finally, we have a sensor. So let's use a very practical example to help us understand the basics of a feedback loop. Let's imagine that you're at home and you've just heard reports about there being a decrease in the temperature outside. Well, that outside temperature can cause a decrease in the temperature inside your home as well. And this change is what we call a variable. So this decrease in temperature is noted by the thermometer that's contained within your thermostat. So the thermometer is sensing that the temperature inside your home is 73 degrees. And because the thermometer is the component that notices the change, it is referred to as the sensor because it sensed a decrease in the temperature. What happens next is that the thermometer confers with the thermostat. And the thermostat has a set point value, or a preferred temperature, which in this case is 78 degrees. And because this is the set temperature, we call it the control center. So this control center causes stimulation from an effector. And in this case, the effector would be a heating furnace or a heating element inside of the home that works to counteract the activity of the initial variable. And as a result, we'd have a gradual increase of the temperature. So now that we've got the basics of feedback loops, let's look at the two types that exist, starting with the negative feedback loop first. Now, just as a heads up, this example will and should seem similar to the previous example. Let's imagine that you're outside and you're outside walking. There is a noticeable drop in temperature. Well, that outside temperature can cause a decrease in your body's temperature as well. And again, this change is what we call a variable. So in this instance, the decrease in temperature is noted by the skin because our skin has unique receptors that we call thermoreceptors. And it's their role and their responsibility to sense a change in temperature. And because of these receptors, we appropriately refer to the skin as the sensor because, again, it sensed a decrease in temperature. Next, the message received by the skin communicates with the brain. And this happens specifically in one component of the brain that's responsible for the regulation of body temperature, which is called the hypothalamus. And you may be able to see it here, noted by the lightly shaded green area. And because this is responsible for regulating temperature, we call it the control center. So this control center causes stimulation of an effector. 
And in this case, the effector would be our muscles that begin contracting, producing a shivering response to help warm the body. And as a result, we'd have a gradual increase of the internal body temperature. So here's the major takeaway of a negative feedback loop. They are responsible for reversing conditions within the body. Now let's turn our attention to positive feedback loops. So if we know that a negative feedback loop reverses a particular body process or condition, that must mean that positive feedback loops continue them. Now, the thing to remember here is that we have all of the same components as we did before. So let's imagine that your sister is pregnant and she's just let others know that the rate of her contractions are increasing. Well, the increased number of contractions is going to help push the fetus further down the vaginal canal. And we can call this change in the positioning of the fetus in addition to the increased number of contractions, a variable. And as this fetus is being pushed further along the canal, the skin, which contains stretch receptors, will sense the widening of the canal. And because of these receptors, we appropriately refer to the skin, again here, as the sensor, because it sensed the descent of the fetus and the widening of the vaginal canal. Next, the message received by the skin communicates with the brain, and this happens specifically in a part of the brain called the pituitary gland, which releases the hormone oxytocin. Now, the role of oxytocin stimulates more uterine contractions, helping the body to further release the fetus. And because the pituitary gland is responsible for regulating the birthing process, we refer to it and the brain as the control center. So this control center causes stimulation of an effector, and in this case, that would be the uterine muscles to contract. And as a result, we'll have the eventual release of the fetus. So again, here's the major takeaway for positive feedback loops. They are responsible for continuing a particular body process, just as we've shown here. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if you indeed found value in it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.